Welcome to anybody who's joining us live or watching on the replay to our first professional in the room live on LinkedIn. So we are streaming this for the Inspiration Space community and then to all of you beautiful people out there on LinkedIn. I am delighted to have Neil Sheff join us today. He's an Inspiration Space member, New Beginnings alumni, former investment banker and founder of Rightfully. And today, Neil is going to talk to us about storytelling for sales. So, Neil, do you want to introduce yourself? Tell us where you're dialing in from and how you came to content writing and being the founder of a creative agency by way of investment banking. Yeah, thanks, uh, Liana. It's really good to be here. And for that, that intro, so maybe to go slightly more, give everyone more of a background. Let me just jump straight to the background. So I'm based in Dubai now. We moved, our family moved seven months ago. Our team's really all over the place, mostly in the UK, then some Europe and US. Today, we are a, a writing on demand service, rightfully. We help our clients to stand out, tell stories, educate and most importantly, drive and maximize their organic reach. We, I, I started the business six years ago. We started as an SEO agency, helping clients to rank and get to the top of Google. And then we pivoted and began to focus on the content side of things as well as SEO content. Prior to that was investment banking, as you pointed out, the traditional, I guess, Indian route, which is you either become a doctor or you go finance. And I went down the finance route and just went into banking and jumped from various banks and tried loads of different things. I was a project manager, ultimately delivering change for within investment banking. And it was, I learned a lot. It was great. By day I was, uh, I was banking and by night I started launching websites and learning digital marketing and losing loads of money. But over time, over the course of say seven years, I kind of lost less and less every year. And then I started to win and started to make money. And I just loved the idea of being able to create something without overthinking it, without presenting it to anyone. I've got an idea and I could just implement it. And then I could at some point make a sale. And the most unbelievable thing, and to an extent, it still blows my mind today, is when I made sales to people I've never met in my life. And that's about digital marketing. And I think I've always been obsessed by that. And I still am. And, and so I did that for myself for seven years whilst investment banking as a project manager. And then decided in 2017 to go follow my passion and help other businesses to stand out and, and drive digital growth. And yeah, we've been doing that since and six years ago across the UK, US, and now more recently in the last year or so in MENA in the UAE. So it's really interesting. There's different cultural differences across different regions and where you speak and manage the clients. And I'm, I'm learning every day. So it keeps me, it keeps me going. Fantastic. So let's dive in because what you've just done now was a story. You told us a story for sales. Mm -hmm. And I know that storytelling is one of the most powerful tools that a founder can have, especially when you're bootstrapping. It's something that you've got to use if you're pitching for investment, if you're pitching for clients, partners, you got to be able to tell your story. So I'm going to hand over to you to take us through this workshop and everything that we need to know for storytelling for sales. So grab your pens and pencils lads and ladies and let's go yeah i would say the one of the best things that you could do is any business can do whether you're a tiny business or very large business is story selling when you start to story sell you actually don't it doesn't feel like you're actually making a sale making a sell or a pitch on both ends and that's the person that's doing the selling you're just having a conversation, the person on the receiving end is just simply getting to know you. And it just becomes interesting. And I'll give you a really quick example. A couple of weeks ago, I went to a networking event here in Dubai. And the next day, I received a phone call from someone at the event. I had no idea it was, what, it was a Dubai number. So I knew it was someone in Dubai, but I just, to be honest, I thought it was my bank or something, asking for money. And so I picked up the phone and he was really clear. I had a very friendly voice and introduced himself and reminded me who he was and he said and he told me a story about someone he went to the same event to with and how she well in a in maybe in a nice way because this is being streamed he explained how he was there to meet loads of people and for the first eight minutes he ended up hearing all of her problems 
And I just thought that story was really funny and I just cracked up laughing. And what happened was that was almost like a cold call and a cold email. Obviously, we had met maybe for five minutes at the event. He called me and usually I would be quite closed with these conversations and I just want to get off. I want to get back to my laptop, right? Or get back to some strategic work that I'm working on. But I just, that, the moment I started laughing, I could feel it. I just opened up and it just became such an easy conversation. And it, it almost just became a very natural conversation. And then he explained what he did and I explained why I did. And it was just, hey, let's look for a way to work for you. And suddenly that one laughter can, it's like breaking bread for the first time. If you can tell a story that connects with someone else, whether it makes them laugh, or there's an emotional connection because they've been through something similar, or there's a situation they've been through and they can resonate with it, or it makes you relatable. A story that makes you relatable can work. If you can do that, you don't need to memorize your sales script. You don't need to memorize what gazillion products you have in your database that solves that person's problem, or how your pricing works and how you're going to onboard there. You don't need to care about that. You just need to care about who you're talking to and building as natural, I say as natural because there is a mechanism here, right? When it comes to sales, it is, it's a task, right? But if you can build as natural a process as possible, it will just make every future conversation, even the proposal or whatever your sales process looks like, a lot easier. So if we were going to get tactical and like super strategic, because I know that not everyone feels comfortable at networking events or even selling themselves on social media. If we imagine for a moment we've got an invisibility cloak. How would one start to craft their own story for sales? So what I would, the obvious answer to that question is, why are you doing what you're doing? And often the, one of the stories that comes out when you meet founders is, I was suffering with this problem and now I'm helping others. That's very similar to the story that I've just given. And if that is you, without making it up, if it genuinely is you, then leverage that story. And I remember when I first started the business six years ago, I was speaking to a friend, Mark, a really great guy. And I said, and I, I was working on my story at the time. And I said, yeah, my, my story is I was building this business and now I'm helping others. And I remember being sold to from other agencies and other provide, service providers, and I didn't feel like they cared. So I'm here to step in and do this for other businesses because I've been there for them. And he said, that sounds great, but your background investment banking sounds really interesting. Why don't you tell people about that? And I said, because... Whenever I tell people about that, it's just two, it's apple and cheese, two totally different things, basically. And I don't want people to be confused. And he said, actually, it makes you more credible. And it means you understand the numbers and the business side, because I'm guessing there was a bit of that. And I just, that, so it was almost up until that moment. And I'm sure I was by that point, five or six months into business by that point, I had literally avoided telling people. And it was almost like a secret and almost like the secret that I was living in investment banking. The secret was I was building a business on the side and I didn't want anyone to know because I thought I'd get in trouble or whatever. And so the other secret now I've left, the, left investment banking to start a business is I never used to work in investment banking. I've always been in the digital marketing space. So I kept this secret for six months, right? Until he told me that actually that makes you more interesting. And, and he helped me with the line, I remember. And he said, hi, I'm Neil Sheff former investment banking consultant turned digital marketing strategist. And I still remember that sentence to this day. And I still use it all the time. Actually, two weeks, two, two hours ago, just before this session, I was in a private members club, just meeting, just had a meeting with some other business owners. And now I know it works. You're telling people your background that adds credibility and just being very original and authentic from day one just will make life a lot easier. And you'll end up losing, using so much less energy than you would have tried to make something up. So to go tactical, I would say, look, find areas in your past that explains why you are here today, right? That's the easiest starting point. And everyone will have a reason for doing it. And sometimes it's the way you word it and the way you message it. 
this mark helped me with all my investment bank consultant turn digital marketing. That one sentence is less than 10 words, but it's it just, you can gather so much and it, it helps you to become a lot more trustworthy, especially if I'm speaking to a business owner in the finance space, the wealth space, right? Even the health space. And so that you've got in the past, and you could just do a brainstorm, get a piece of paper and just write it down, write your reasons, write words that pop into your head. And now what you want to do is start to put these words together. And there's this concept, I think Elon Musk talks about it, where it talks about the, the concept of the first principles. And you start with a very large paragraph of words. And then what you do is you take away the words that actually add no extra to what you're trying to say. And you just take it down to the very, the very simple words and the quickest and the, the most concise way of saying something. So that's one way. The other way is if you're struggling with that is just simply go speak to people you've worked with and ask them why they worked with you, why they value you. It could be also an opportunity to improve. What could you have done better, right? Since you're asking them, might as well ask them that. And what you'll find is you'll get words that resonate you, with you. And when you ask up to 10 people and more, you start to find a pattern. And then in that pattern, you'll find your story, right? And your story, and this is really crucial, and this is probably where I'll end, is where I'll end for this question, is your story is not necessarily about you only. Your story is made up about, more importantly, made up of the clients that you've worked with and that you've now delivered results to help their story. So, and this is where digital marketing and, and just thinking about storytelling and leverage, you can take it to a whole new level is when you start to work with your clients, you start to see their transformations, their results. And now what you're doing is you're integrating their story into your story. And so when you're speaking to another client who's similar to this client, and you can now refer to them. Or you could say, I remember someone used to say to me, when I started, when I started the business, I was doing service as well as coaching. And so I'd, I'd work with people one-to-one. -one. I remember someone said to me, Neil, I feel like throwing the towel in when it comes to digital marketing. And it's just so hard. And I've gone to all these courses and I've paid thousands of pounds on, on these online courses. And I've even attended these mastermind workshops and, and whatnot. And I'm just fed up and I just want to throw the towel in. And I thought that, that phrase was so cool and it was so visual that I started using it with other clients. So do you feel like throwing the towel in? Like, yeah, that's exactly how I feel. How do you know? And, and, and this is what you start to pick up is you start to take your client stories, you start to create your own story, and then the clients that you deliver results to now become new stories that you start to integrate. And it's very much a combination of your own as well as, more importantly, the people you work with and help along their journey. So when you're saying that about the throwing the towel in, do you remember when I told you when you were in New Beginnings that I was on the tube and I was there were these two guys that mm. were talking about copywriters yeah. And he described his problem exactly the way that you described his problem. He literally was about to throw the towel in and I like couldn't help myself. And I was like, you should check out rightfully. I was like, <laughs> you should check out rightfully because it's, it was created to solve this problem because he was, his head was in his hands. Like he was getting like real passionate mm. about it. And he was obviously like going for mm. drinks with his friend after work, but like this copywriting situation was really frustrating him. And he mm. felt I, I, he was going to throw the towel in. And there's something in that when you tell your story, other people pick up your story. So when they see people mm. in that situation, like, oh, I know the hero of that story. I know the person, you know, that can help you with that. And another hack that I found really helpful is using chat GPT. Back in November, when you could literally upload all like it, limitless amounts of information <laughs> when it was new, I went through three years of Zoom recordings and I transcribed wow. them and I plugged them all in chat GPT. And I was like, you tell me what the common threads are. <laughs> and it, it helps to crystallize so clearly the challenges that people have when they come to inspiration space, what New Beginnings does, what Build does, what, what the whole community offer does. And instead of feeling like I was shooting in the dark, trying mm. to use my own language to explain someone else's situation, 
it gave me the words and it made it that much easier to tell mm-hmm. both our customer story, but then our business story. So mm-hmm. do you have any frameworks or anything that anyone can use to be more methodical? Is there a way, is it customer interviews or how do you get to the heart of that for, for your own storytelling purposes? Mm-hmm. So that's a really good, really good question. We're actually, funny enough, while I'm doing, having this interview, we're actually doing a webinar, our team on how to write your own brand manifesto. And it, we, so we've recently done our own one and it just brings the essence to what you're doing to a whole new level in a way that it even just helps you to rethink how you're going to tell your stories and how you want people to feel emotionally about your brand. So that's, probably a concept that that your audience should look into and we're probably going to run that webinar again but i'll give you a real example so we're in the middle of launching a new a new piece of technology and it's a voice thought app where we're looking to get our clients thoughts in seconds it's a big challenge and we're looking to solve it so at the moment we're, we're beta testing um the tool and we're trying to get feedback and every result and every a uh, positive piece of feedback is just gold at the moment. For instance, and, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because when you're launching something new, whilst your story, you could probably, I was wondering how long it would take before we start talking chat GPT, by the way, and 20, 20 minutes in isn't too bad, but I'm sure we'll talk about it more. But so there's your story part, but then what, what drives interest FOMO, conversion, leads, is when you start to tell your client stories and you're able to tell it in a way that's compelling. Either there's a clear transformation, here to here, right? A big result. If you can start to get that across, then it's, it becomes limitless. Like growth becomes easier because you're not marketing a product you're now marketing a so as an example we're be testing this tool and a message this morning actually so it's on my instagram stories for those that want to go check it out is a friend of mine who's a who's starting a dance a dance kind of classes in dubai she wanted to understand her client her customers and she wanted she wants to ultimately grow her classes and she wants to really refine the messaging and so we have this we have this whole conversation in over in one of these shisha cafes recently and we were talking about rather than selling classes and the actual task or the actual product that people are buying what's the ultimate why behind their, them attending that class is it because they just want to have loads of fun Do, or is it people are losing like 500 calories dancing around as opposed to having to run on a treadmill stare at a wall, listen to podcasts. It's not entertaining. I guess it depends on the podcast. But And so we had this whole discussion and I said, why don't you just get your client's thoughts? Why don't you just go out to your clients rather than sitting here and asking us and us brainstorming, why don't you just go to your clients and see what they say and what they think? And what she did is, and I said, by the way, I've just launched this new tool. Go check it out. Go use it. I'm going to give you beta access. You're on the VIP list and go test it out. And we went home that evening. The next day, my wife and 10 other dance students, and my wife's one of them, all got this all got this message, basically our talk, to share their thoughts on her dance studio. And the next day, today, she messaged me this morning. She said, wow, this is so easy. I can't believe I've just got all of their responses. I've got their voice and I've got the transcription. And more importantly, I've got 60% of... The resp- I've got 60% of the responses within 24 hours, right? So for me, so to avoid confusing people, the example I'm trying to share here is really something that we're launching and the story we're trying to tell. So the moment I saw that, I went, wow, 60% of people that you've sent it out to have responded within 24 hours. And I was watching my wife do this. So she's obviously using our tech tool and she was responding with her feedback to Neha, who's the dance teacher. And she said, Neil, I wouldn't have answered these questions if it had come through as a form. But because I can just voice my thoughts, I could share this. And when she sent me that stat, 60%, within 24 hours, I put that straight on Instagram. And it's those stories that have a tangible result. They tend to be the ones that are easier to bring more people on. And what I noticed this morning is we had about three or four extra subscribers for the waiting list. 
And more importantly, someone messaged me probably an hour after I posted that, so how can I get access to this tool? And so now, they've, now we've created FOMO in the tool. And it's not because I'm telling my story, it's now that I'm trying to tell the beta tester story of what it, of the results it's giving our users. And to be honest, the person that messaged me didn't actually know how she could apply it. And I said, look, in your business, you would apply in these two ways. She said, oh, wow. And then half an hour ago, she just messaged me on Instagram saying, oh my God, this is so quick. And so now what I'm going to do, guess what? I'm going to take a screenshot of this is so quick. Oh, wow. And I'm going to share that story. And so what you want to get into, there's a concept called fly, the marketing flywheel. There's a nice HubSpot article around this as well. And the concept is very simple. You win new clients, you talk about the results, or you deliver work, you talk about their results, and you share it. And then what happens? You get more clients. And then you keep sharing those clients' results, and then they go get you more clients. And now what you're doing is you're leveraging your clients, and they're becoming your assets. Yeah, I hope that answers the question. Now, it's all well and good saying that when you basically have a SaaS product, right? Like, I sometimes get, like, envy and FOMO with people that have products. Because when you're in service-based business, it's not as straightforward because the time it takes to go from getting a new client to then getting the result is not as quick as just download and then take action. The transformation can take longer. And sometimes people don't necessarily want their stories told. I know that's something that we find in inspiration space. Is there are some things that are like some of the biggest wins that actually people don't want shared out in the public. It's Chatham House rules because there's this element of everyone trying to pretend like they've got like their lives together. And some of the most transformative stuff that we do is like in the situation when you don't actually have your life together, but no one's going to go do a victory lap on that. What advice do you have or how does it look from a service-based perspective where A, the transformation might not be as quick, B, the lead time or the sales cycle might be a little bit longer and C, people may not want you to share. There's a few questions in there. I've been in the service business for our six years. The tool that we're building is our first half tool. So I am service business first and I love service businesses. I would say there's a long and a short answer. The short answer is I think everyone, and I think about this question a lot, and I've thought about this question for six years, and it's how do I become the only choice in this industry? How do I become the only choice in this space? Now, the answer to that question is going to be unique for everyone, but there, is, there are fundamental tactics that everyone should have in place in order to become the only choice. And what I like to do is I like to, in the beginning, to follow a sales process and make sure that at each stage, you are optimizing that each stage to help you to become the only choice in your client's mind, right? For instance, when someone is, if you're at a networking event, let's just go really simple. Forget digital marketing, forget funnels, forget challenges, social media, all of that. Let's just go really simple because if you build this offline with an offline mind, it will help you online just automatically. So let's go. There is no, you need to build a business based on networking and meeting people, right? So the first thing that you, what you want to have in place is you ideally want this, your story and your messaging to be super clear. You want to make sure that you're talking to people's desires and pains in your messaging. So for instance, if we just take the dance teacher the service-based business as an example, rather than if I was to play a new dance class, rather than talk about how I deliver dance classes, I would probably lean on one of two areas, either health or wealth, just because they tend to be at the top of people's mind in terms of problems and aspirations. And because it's a dance class, I'd probably go down the obvious health route. And I would, on average, I would work out how many calories I used up every dance class that I had as, as being a teacher. And then I would ask my students to ideally record their calories, or I'd maybe invest in some tech so that I can measure calories. And if everyone's losing 400 calories, I'd probably say, you will be guaranteed. The messaging would be along the lines of come to my dance studio. I guarantee you, you're going to lose 300 calories whilst, whilst becoming a better Bollywood dancer, as an example. And I would play with that type of messaging. Now, I'm not saying that's where I would end. But I would start with something tangible that relates to either health or wealth, depending on the example. And then over time, I would refine it as I got to know my clients. That's the first thing. 
as a product that when you explain it, people become naturally interested in it. I go to a lot of networking events in Dubai and I come across people that will go, I come across so many insurance brokers that say, yeah, we're an insurance brokerage company. We help you protect, protect yourself with insurance. And because I'm not so close to that space, I switch off within the first five seconds. I have no idea what they do. And often, just because I'm naturally inquisitive, I have to ask a bunch of questions. And I just need to know what it means and what they do. And most of the time, people don't do that. So most of the time, most people will just leave them and forget about them and move on. And I met someone recently, he started talking to me about how they deal with hospitality and how it, there's two types of insurance. One, there's a lot of cowboys and then how they do it. And I thought, that was really interesting. And I just thought to myself, you could have explained that in a much better way. And I just think if anyone's listening to this part of this answer, there's explaining it in a way that you understand, right? But then there's explaining it in a way that makes you memorable and almost encourages the person to say, ah, what does that mean? Or what do you mean by this? Or that sounds really interesting. Could you tell me more? And if you can find that, you, what you start to, your message that you use online just becomes easier because you've already tested it offline. So this is the first fundamental thing. Explain your product in a way that's interesting for you and for others. And then secondly, is when, you go, when you're going to an event, we're sticking to the offline kind of methodology here, is you want to start to talk about some of the stories and some of the results that you've delivered. And if you're new in business, it might be delivering it for yourself. And you can be open about that. I was back in the day, hey, we're building this business, we're starting off, but you know what? I've done all of this in my last five years. Here's what we've done. We'd love to help you out. And you're just being real and people appreciate that. And so that's two things. And then the other fundamental, if you think about the sales process, when someone's interested in the conversation, it's how are you presenting yourself and how are you presenting the work you're going to deliver? And often what you find is people will go into the house and they'll explain the process and the intricates and the workshop here and the workshop there and the seminar and the fact that we're going to brainstorm this all together. And most of the time, most people are just interested in the end result. What do I get and how much? And the how much doesn't become a question because if you're delivering just in, in remarkable results for the right type of client, pricing is, is a value conversation. Yes to that. Something that Dana Publicover, an analogy that she uses is if someone said to you, you're going to get up really early in the morning and you're going to have to go to the airport and you're going to stand in line and it's going to be hot and it's going to be sticky and the food's going to be crap and the flight's going to be 12 hours. Would you sign up for that versus would you like a 10 day holiday in Hawaii. Ultimately the exact same thing. And when you get into the process, you're taking people from the early morning wake up to the person next to you who's not wearing a mask or whatever is like kind of your kryptonite versus do you want to take a 10 day vacation to Hawaii? And that's something that's really important to remember. I've naturally developed that storytelling bit. I have two or three that I tell all the time. And it was funny when Mm. I went to Anthropy in October, it was the first time that I told one of the stories in a place where I actually felt quite intimidated. And there was a a very well-known established investor and he clapped in the middle of me telling the story because of the transformation that I was talking about. I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. And if you look at some of our more megalomania founders out there, the Adam Newmans and Elizabeth Holmes, they tell the same story over and over and over again, the same inflection points, the bit where it's the laugh, like the same line all the time. And it really brings people into them. However, not everyone has that kind of confidence. So again, how do you move over that first hurdle? Because I know for me, people just get super enthused by my own energy. And I'm one of those people, I'm enthusiastic about what I'm enthusiastic about. And I can't even bottle it up. And people really gravitate towards that. But some people are a little bit more shy or intimidated. And that effervescence doesn't necessarily come to the fore, even if they do have the story. Mm. That's a great question. Just something to add before I answer that is just to go super technical, and maybe this is extreme. I don't believe that you can no longer have a WordPress template website 
and market that. I believe that now digital marketing and presenting yourself, you've got to think, how do I 5X this, right? If you're launching a new investment bank or a finance company, you need to look like Goldman Sachs or you need to look better. And the great thing about digital marketing is you can. And what you'll notice, what you'll notice with our websites and, and anything we do on the digital space, we spend a lot more time, a lot more money than we probably should. But I know our sales process and our sales conversion and the conversation is a lot easier. So I'm investing for the future. Messaging is very important and so is design and how you bring those two together. But I would invest. I spoke to someone reached out and I was just giving, giving her some advice last week. And she said, yeah, I'm looking to build a WordPress website. And I went to a partner of ours because we don't do it. I said, hey, could you help the person out? How much are your minimum website? And it was pretty high. I don't think she needs that. But her immediate reaction was, wow, I can't be spending that. My budget is way too low compared to that. And here's what. And then I went and then I got a freelancer. And I said, you could probably use someone like this. And to be fair, you should probably spend, if you want to be creative and custom and really think about it. Um, and by the way, you should probably get us to help you with the messaging. We're going to be looking at 5K, maybe 10K. And she said, no, I could probably find someone for 1K. And I, I've just been in the space for such a long time and she will find someone for 1K, but she's not going to stand out. And I just think, you know what, entrepreneurs and business owners who are watching this is save your time, save your money for the future, spend more now and make your life easier. If you're trying to stand out in a place, the best way to do it is to have a better website than your competitors or to have, not necessarily a better website, but a website with messaging and design that stands out, right? As opposed to some boxy websites, stock images, you really want to get away from that because it will drive efficiency in your marketing and sales when you've got that bit right. And that goes to your email funnel, all of that and your social presence. And so that's something I wanted to just share. To answer your question, so when I first left investment banking, one of my biggest fears was actually what my friends would think. And I was really nervous. I remember you used to do this thing called Website Wednesdays. And every Wednesday, I probably should do it again, because there was a part of me that really enjoyed it, actually, and there was like a sense of community. Every Wednesday, I used to go onto Instagram stories, and I said, hey, guys, find, give me a question. And I didn't really have a large following back then. And so I would almost like just tell my friends and people that I know, hey, send me a question because no one else would. But what would happen over time is when they'll send me a question, I'd go, yeah, this person's asked this question or on my website Wednesdays, I would share some advice. And the people that are watching that would resonate with it. And they would go, ah, so this is what Neil does. This is what it means to be like in the digital marketing space. And, and actually started to win clients on the back of that. But I remember when I was going through that journey, I was, it felt really awkward because I knew my friends were watching and my family was watching. But here's the thing, I was doing it because I didn't have a job. My wife had just left her job because she was now on maternity. Her pay was about to leave, stop in about two or three months. And that was the, the kick up the offer I needed, is to remind myself, hey, you've got a mortgage. You don't need to care what your mates think or your friends or your family. Are you just, otherwise you need to go back into work. And so the pain of my friends and family, what were they thinking of me versus the pain of going back to my job, the two pains were on two different pages, right? This pain is on Google page 20. This, page, this is on Google page one, that pain, right? And so that, maybe that's not good advice, but look, if, you're, if, there's, if you're nervous, if you're worried, if you're an introvert, actually, here's another story. Is I, remember, I remember someone that was quite lazy as an entrepreneur. And we were talking about him. We were talking about his lifestyle and his family. And he was living at home. And his parents were covering his bills. And I said to him, you need to tell your parents to stop covering your bills. And ideally, move out. So that you've now got the pressure to make it work. Sometimes you do need some outside pressure to make you accountable to making it work. And if you want to take it at another level, you can go find yourself an accountability partner. You can do all of that. Go find yourself a coach. But ultimately go find something that is going to make it a very clear you need to do this or it's or you're going to end up feeling that pain and that's the approach i've taken and i would say a softer approach might be to ease yourself into it 
not everyone wants to be a YouTube creator, right? Or an Instagram or sharing videos on Instagram stories and videos. There's days and weeks where I don't want to do it either. And you'll notice I don't do it. And I don't want to do it. I guess what? I don't do it. I don't chain myself to a calendar. I do what I feel like doing in the moment. And that's the great thing about being in business. And if you actually don't feel, so that's what I shared in the beginning was one piece of advice. If you feel like that's not you, that advice doesn't feel fit you, the softer version is just get yourself out there in a way that feels comfortable. There are enough Twitter influencers who have never shared their face. And all they share is an NFT pic of their face. There's enough Instagram accounts that actually don't publish videos. All they publish is images with really cool, educational, concise microcopy. So find what you're comfortable with. And then at some point, you might want to switch it up. Yes. And I think there's something in the analog going offline. I love meeting people offline or online, like through Zoom networking events and things like that, Mm -hmm. as opposed to posting on social media. Because I find for us, one of our challenges is There's only so many words in the English dictionary and how one person interprets coaching or an accelerator. People will come in with this kind of preconceived notion of what we might be offering based on the language that we use to describe it. And so now you just, you got to feel it, like you got to experience it. And I found it really reassuring when I was having a conversation with Carlos and Lawrence, the founders of the Happy Startup School, and they've been going at this for 10 years. And I always say I wouldn't be doing inspiration space had I not found them at the wee hours of the night right before I pressed to go on the first inspiration space website. And I was a bit like, is this a little bit too wacky? Is any, is anybody even want anything like this? And I found the happy startup school and I was like, oh my God, it's proof. And we were on a call in January and they asked the other person that we were with, like, what do you think we do? And I liked the way that they handled that. And that gave me a lot of confidence and sense that they've been at this for 10 years and they don't even try and explain it. It is what it is. And they let other people use their language to explain what it is that they do and what the Happy Startup School and Lawrence and Carlos do better than a lot that I've ever seen is they show up consistently. Whether there's an audience or not, they show up consistently, right? Their content, their messaging, it's always feels like then it always feels genuine and it's always consistent and there's something in this you don't need to have an audience to perform it's about getting that message out all the time and I know Beyonce as an example she's got Sasha Fierce that was the whole reason why she created Sasha Fierce was to have this alter ego so that she didn't feel uncomfortable as Beyonce which is ironic in and of itself right but there is something in wearing the mask breaking the fourth wall for yourself so you can just get out there and do what you need to do. And I agree with you on this point. You got to have some skin in the game. It's very easy to sit along the side, but once you've got something that's motivating you, that fire yeah. underneath you, all of a sudden you're like, wow, I didn't know I was capable of that. <laughs> Here we are. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so here's another fundamental that I believe everyone should do to make the sales process a lot easier and actually drive more clients is if you're if you everyone's got a particular area of expertise when you're starting a business you are an expert at one thing and generally you are one one in a hundred top experts in that space right if you look in your local area you are an expert and if you branch out you're probably one in a thousand right but what often people don't do is share that expertise and demonstrate that expertise in a way that drives them more interest and just makes the conversation easier. So if you're stuck, here's a really good test. If you're stuck on sales calls explaining what you do and why you do it and how you do it and why you're so good at it, and they start asking you questions like, but why would I do this, not do that? Or this person's price is this and your price is this. If you, if you hear any of those similar questions and comments and you have those similar conversations, I would say you're not demonstrating what you do in a way that serves you and serves your clients. And the best way, the best, like one, of the, one really cool tactical way of solving this is the number of three. Create three guides around topics 
in your space. And so one guide might be the transformation that say you've worked with Liana and you've helped her go from here to confidence in three months. With her permission, explain how you did it, the challenges she was going through, what you did, the work you did together, right? And then more importantly, how Liana is doing now and how she feels and what's opened up for her. Might be a good chance to bring Liana's voice into this as well. And if you can describe those details, and the more details, the better, right? And don't fear, if you, in fact, while you're doing this, if you fear that someone's going to copy and paste, and or they could do it themselves, then you're on the right mark in terms of the level of detail. If you've got to build that uncomfortableness, that's a really good sign that you're sharing a lot. And then what you start to do is you build three of these. One could be about someone's story, a transformation story. Everyone's delivering transformations, by the way. And to go on a slight tangent, we'll go back, is in my service business, we, in fact, all of quarter one, we have this challenge, which is we do all this great content. But we don't want to be valued for the content. Oh, Neil and rightfully has done this blog post and it's great. What we want to be valued for is the results we're driving for our clients. And so we actually changed our messaging slightly and our storytelling slightly on rightfully page. And maybe you can link to one of these as well. We're now doing our own transformation stories. And regardless of what business you're in, there are clear transformations that you are delivering for your clients. And with their permission, if you can show the before and the after and the how, then you're onto a winner. And the way you do that is, and we did that visually, you could do that on, you, you can do that as a case study, but we decided on it, our Instagram stories, we wanted people to see a bit before, after, and how we did one on email open rate. And we said, this is the email open rate, 24 something percent. And this is how we've done it. And now our clients are now valuing us for email opens and click-throughs as opposed to can you write our email? So everyone has, if we take this concept of becoming the only choice further, is you've all got expertise, demonstrate it by sharing it. My very first blog was um, want to build a new website, learn from my 20,000 pound mistake. And it was a, re- it was a three and a half thousand word piece on the mistakes I made and everything I would avoid. I've now leveraged a big failure to now make me look like an expert, which is incredible, right? So take your expertise. Now, then take it further. So we're doing another fundamental is what transformation are you delivering for your clients? And then put that together in a way that has impact. And we wanted to do the opposite of what we do as a service. We write. So we wanted to visually describe that and storytell that. And so we did that as a transformation real video. And today, actually on LinkedIn, I'm going to share exactly how we did it because it was really painful, but it's now not so painful to put together these videos. Yeah, I hope that helps. So that if we bring it all back, how do you become the only choice in the industry? Explain what you do in a really compelling way. Talk about the results, not the how. If you get into the how, that's because they're asking or because you need to get into it to share some methodology secrets, right? That's all part of the messaging. You'll hear client companies like Accenture and these big consultant companies use words like, let's accelerate communication, right? They're being very purposeful with that type of language because it shows how professional they are and how they can deliver real big impact and big change. They're doing it for a reason. And every small business and large can learn from that. And then start to think about guides, demonstrating your expertise, demonstrating your credibility, and then start using your client stories with these transformation stories. Tell their story, help that to drive this marketing flywheel for the business, and more importantly, help you to become the only choice. Because the only choice, they charge what they want. They don't convince. They just say, this is what we do, and this is, do you want to work with us? Hey, we're fully booked, but we can squeeze you in. They have that type of conversation. I love that. I love that. I got to get you back in to talk about service and service design. Having worked with you on the other side of that as a client, I've got to say the customer service does not ever experience anything like that. And even oh, just thanks. how you've designed the product and how you, you buy from you. I think that also makes it very easy for you to be the only choice. So I'm definitely going to have to get you back in mm. so we can talk about that because my mind was blown. And I was like, I can <laughs> order it like food. 
it's like e-commerce <laughs> for content. This has been a very helpful conversation. I think there's a lot of good tips that folks are going to be able to take away from this. Thank you very much, Neil. Where will we find Rightfully? Give yourself a plug. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much, everyone. I really appreciate it. So you'll find Rightfully at rightful.ly and we are launching a very cool voice thoughts app on askinput.com where you can get your client's thoughts in seconds. Love it. So I'm going to pop this here. Right. Grab your spot on the waiting list. Hmm. Nice. Cool. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to see you. I know we will see you again soon. The halls of the old inspiration space. And yes, enjoy the sun, my friends. Have a good one. All the best. Bye. Bye.